<laughs> Still, we have one more spot. If you want to join, you are welcome to join. Let's pray for some. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, please uh, open my lips to praise you. And may the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be pleasing to you. Um, I both depend on you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Jesus and Envy. <clears throat> okay, uh, we, we have been doing psalms uh, this semester, and why do why do we psalms? Psalms. Uh, there are many ways to uh, to psalms. Okay, and the psalms are made of the songs and music, and like a, a telephone ring. You know, nowadays, <laughs> only psalms. And. Okay, Joseph, you are the North Western student, so I'm going to ask you a question. So if you want to, you meet some guy, you like her very much, and then you want to know who that person is, how can you find that guy? How can I find out? Yeah. Do you want the Christian answer? No, no, come on. I, we are not that much Christian here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, that's a good way. Okay, if you go on a date, okay, that's good. That's the American way. But I, let me tell you the biblical way. Okay. You look at his playlist, get his iPod, and listen to his music. He'll tell you who that guy is. Right? What kind of music he listens, what moves him, what the essence of him. Right? So uh, when you look at songs, these are the songs of Jesus. 150 of them. The songs of Jesus. So we get the heart of Jesus. Okay? So, you know, those days we didn't, Jesus did not carry the iPod. But in his brain, he carried the songs. He lived by songs. Okay? He was born by songs. When he died on the cross, he recited the songs. Right? So, this is the songs of Jesus. So that, 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 that's why we are excited about doing Psalms, because we want to know Jesus, right? So Psalm is written by David, uh, Solomon, and unknown, and then uh, this Psalm is written by who? Asaph. Who's this guy? Uh, Asaph wrote how many Psalms? 12 Psalms, okay? Uh, uh, Psalm 50, and then Psalm 73 to 83, so uh, 12 Psalms, okay? And David wrote about 50 songs. So he, he was the uh, worship director, okay, under David. So this is your dream job, okay? Any music major wants to be a music director for David, okay? That means what? David was a musician. David picked the most talented guy, right? Most what? Future guy. And then he said, Come be my music director for God's people. So ASAP is that guy, okay? So uh, let's imagine ASAP, okay? Uh, so I'm trying to imagine ASAP. Oh, what does ASAP look like? Perhaps he looks like a Paul Timnan. <laughs> All dressed up every Sunday, okay? All shaven. Take a shower at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Praise, you know, right? Right? Do daily bread, right? And he sings like what? Pure cow. <laughs> right? But his face was breaking up. You know, he had some, something like that. Right? And then he had some inner struggle, okay? Right? What's going on? I don't know what. I don't know. Right? And then he was intellectual and he, he did uh, pre med, right? And then he studied chemistry. And philosophy and this like okay? And then perhaps he taught Solomon. I'm not sure, right? So uh, contemporary, uh, I think he seems like a Chris Tomlin, right? And then, uh, but he was more than Chris Tomlin. He was like two, uh, maybe Jeremy Camp. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have no idea, okay? But uh, think about that. He got a dream job, okay? 
he went to the music school here, and then he started posting, hey, music director wanted, he got a job. And I'm pretty sure that David treated well, okay? Good salary, lots of uh, good family, and then, and then he wrote Psalm 73. And Psalm 73 is very uh, personal psalm of ASAP. And let's, let's uh, think about, he reveals his inner struggle. Right? And then maybe his psalm was written, maybe he was a bit old. It sounds like a, not a, I think when you look at the uh, Psalm 50, he, he wrote that when he was young. And then 53, maybe he is old. So some, he has some issues right now. And then let's look at his issues, okay? Okay, first, uh, let's look at uh, uh, let's look at the issues of psalm. Okay, right? uh, What is the main issue of this psalm? Okay, and he began to, uh, and then he he had a crisis of spiritual life. Look at verse two. Uh, verse two says like this: As for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. Okay. At this point, Asap says, I lost it. I almost lost it. It's, a, it's very surprising because, you know, I told Asap, give me a break. You are under David. You sing the songs of God every day, every moment. That's your job. And you study the Bible, you pray, you don't go to party, and you are a self-controlled man. What is the problem with you? I said, well, give me a break, okay? I'm not like Asap, I'm not like you. I, I don't know how to sing. I wish I could sing. And I'm not like handsome like you. You had the best teacher. Right, so I think this is one of the most uh, beautiful songs for me because in this country, what is man? Let's look at the man definition. Who is man? Okay, so we do some man studies, okay? What is perceived as the perfect man? In America, okay? Man never cries. <laughs> Number one. Number two. Man is a man of standing. They pursue status. He got the status, okay? He's the chief director of uh, David, okay? And then, number three. No problems. Even though you have problems, you don't whine. You don't cry. Right? There's no problems. But if, when you look at this uh, uh, psalm, he's in agony. He complains to God, you know, why me? So he looked through the, he, he lost it. And why he lost it? Because there are two ways to lose it, uh, not actually three ways to lose it. Okay? First, he looked around. He looked around, okay? And then he saw the prosperity of the wicked, number one. So there are many ways you can look at the world, okay? Number one, if you want to lose your faith, go through the look at the prosperity land, okay? You take the glass, and the glass, and look at it. Yeah. And then you look at the world like oh. okay? And then he says like this, why me? And then they, you, you look at the evil man, he says like this, for, for they have no pangs until death, okay? Their bodies are fat and slick. How can you be fat and slick? <laughs> it's crazy. Nobody can be fat and slick. Okay, you, you, you whether fat or 
plum or the skin, the skinny or what? Uh, something like that, okay? So, the, you know, you know, have you seen the guy who's a fat and slim? Maybe Joe Jong, okay? <laughs> they are not in trouble as others are. They have no trouble. And they are not stricken like the rest of the mankind. The Superman, okay? Therefore, their pride is their necklace. Violence co uh, covers them as a garment. Their eyes are swell out uh, through what? Pains, uh, what? Bellies. Their hearts overflow with the bodies. They scoff and they speak. And then, then, they, then, then they defy God. They say, hey, God doesn't know. Who knows? I can do whatever I want to do. Because they said, God doesn't know. Okay, so let's look at this, uh, let's analyze this, uh, the, look at the perception by the lens of envy, okay? Is this true or not true? When you lose faith, okay, your perception changes. Because as people said, grass is or is greener. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, when I was a graduate student, I had a hard time. My wife was, was say, what did you do today? <laughs> I go to lab, I drink coffee, I open my book, and I try to look at the equipment. It's all broken. <laughs> I look at it. I drink more coffee and then come home. <laughs> and then my wife said, What did you do? Can I say, I did nothing? No, I have to say, mm, I don't know. <laughs> but don't bother me, okay? <laughs> and then I envy those people who are working at McDonald's, okay? <laughs> because when I look at it, if I work as much as them, or if I work as many hours I, I can work, right? What? I can make more money, right? True or not true? Yes, true. Because I was working 90 hours, 100 hours, and then, and then if I make that much, you know, then my salary will double, you know? And I have no headache. My hair doesn't go, go gray. I can, I can keep my black hair, okay? <laughs> So if you look at those envies, and then come on, the, the, I was I was be fair. Because you think about those people who are working, they envy me also. Because the, this guy doesn't do nothing. <laughs> he goes to lab, drink coffee, come home, and do nothing. We got paid. Is life fair or not fair? Not fair. So if you look at through the lens of envy, both sides are what? They think, oh, Sam's life is better because he's doing nothing and they're okay. And I'm working. <laughs> Minimum job, and I cannot make a living, okay? Is it true? It's true, of course. So that's why he almost gave up. Right? But those, pe those people who study in the college, they say, oh, you, ah, as soon as I get out of here and I get a job, I'll be happy. You will be miserable because you have to show up to your work <laughs> every day, 5 a.m., and then you cannot leave until the job is done. You cannot call sick and you cannot skip classes. Right? So, and those who are working and say, oh, man, those freshmen, college kids, no, they have easy time, okay? They don't do nothing and they can drink coffee, pound around and walk, do nothing. And then, so, Either way, you know, envy. The envy is very strange. They're looking through the lens of envy. And, and then, ace of lost. <coughs> right? And then, this psalm is very uh, honest psalm. Because in our religious life, look at the worship leader, okay? Pastor Ron, or somebody. <laughs> and you say, 
session like this? No. If he says like this, then he got fired next day. <laughs> Who are you? We get better one. Okay? So in this culture, we cannot even say a few words. Okay? But this is his testing. He look at the world. And then he doesn't, doesn't make any sense. And then how do you process it? How does he process? And then the, the, the second thing he did was, he was like a Solomon. And let me try to understand. Right? And then he tried to understand the, uh, what's going on with the logic, with the things like that. But he said, no, it, it doesn't go anywhere. I become more tired. Because it's very difficult to understand what's going on. Right? So no matter how you look at it, it's difficult to process. And then do you know what he did? He went to the sanctuary. And then he had this moment. What do you do at the sanctuary? Of course, I think he was singing, okay? He was a music director. And then people were praying. And then people were killing the word of God together. And then in verse 17, let's look at verse 17. Okay, that's a very good verse to uh, study. So, maybe, uh, who wants to read? How about John Morris? Can you read 17, verse 17? Okay, let's listen to carefully, okay? Verse uh, 17 is very important uh, verse to look at it. Until I came into the sanctuary of God, then I perceived therein. Okay. This is one of the... He, 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 God is... Where? Where? At school? In classroom? No. He went to the sanctuary of God. And then he uh, discerned what? His, what? What he saw? John? Uh, he perceived the end of the wicked. Their destiny. The, the destiny of the wicked. Okay. So, let me explain to you biblically, okay? Uh, if you look at the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Who made the world? Janjo? No. God created the heavens and earth. Right? And then he put man to work, and then he had a, uh, Eve come up, you know? and then they made it. You know? and, then, and then Adam looked at Eve. And then, wow, woman, and then, wow. And then, and then, and then uh, at, the end, at the end of the Genesis chapter 2, they were naked and what they said? Felt what? No shame. Okay. And then chapter 3, they rebelled against God. But the first thing they felt was what? Shame. When you feel shame, you are wicked. When you feel shame, you die. God said, you will die. Right? So, alright, so let me have a show of hands. Who's not going to die? Raise your hand. Who's going to live forever? Moses? In the kingdom. Okay, I'll finish physically. physically. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, so when I look at Moses, okay, 20 years old, okay? 22. 22. <laughs> Come on, 20 years. Oh, 20 years, okay? <laughs> right, 20s, no? And then he can do all kinds of stuff. You know, I, when I met Paul Timmy in the morning, he had a, uh, french fries, chilies, and hot dogs. <laughs> Mix them together, it's part of my, and he can eat them. Right? When I was 20, I couldn't eat I can eat twice as much then. <laughs> right? And I was as, as, as 10 times handsome then. <laughs> and then I, God said, if you disobey me, you die. Right? And I became that man. I don't care who you are. 
I appreciate it. I would die. And he said, ASAP, realize this, okay? He just realized. Oh my God. Everybody would die. He saw the destiny of wicked. They sort of their destiny. Because you know he's, he, 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 <coughs> he he described like a poetic way. It's like a uh, it's like a slope. Everybody on a slip slope, slippery slope, it's a slippery slope. So you know you put the uh, my phone here, what's gonna happen? It's going up or down. Down and slip, slide. Everything slides. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like this before you go to Frank King Tree, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's like sliding, okay? So people are, you know, Aesop, Aesop saw something. When you go to the, the sanctuary, he saw people are sliding. And then he thought that those wicked people are not sliding. When we went to the sanctuary of God, he saw through God that we are sliding together. Okay, so this is, uh, this is what, what I would ask you. You slide together, how do you, how do you not slide together? Okay, and the wicked people are sliding and then they want to not slide, okay? And then they grab people, okay? Mm -hmm. The more people you grab, grab the much will happen. The slower you're going to slide, the faster you're going to slide. You want to slide faster, okay? So, <laughs> and then the final destination is like you slide down, okay? That's it. And you clip over and die. So that is the common destiny of every man. So you don't believe me, but uh, this is Bible. And then uh, let's think about that. Then he saw two things, you know. And then he saw another one. Okay, I'll, I'll read this one. Next one, uh, 18. Who, who wants to read 18? First 18. About uh, about 14 minutes. <clears throat> Surely you place them on slippery ground. You can cast them down to ruin. 19? Okay, 19. 19 is a key. Uh, suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by the terrorists. Okay, 20. Uh, as a dream, when, you, when one awakens, so when you arise, O oh Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. Okay. And then he makes a confession, okay? And then... Aesop said, his condition before he met Jesus, uh, he went to sanctuary, and he said, uh, 21. When my soul was embittered, <coughs> when I was pricked in the heart, <coughs> I was brutish and ignorant. I was like a beast toward, toward you. This is one of the most surprising verses for me because <coughs> I said, hey, Aesop, okay, you are the music director, and you read the Bible, and you wrote some psalms. But when he met the Holy God, he described himself as my soul was pierced, my heart was embittered. That's what we are. When, when you, your soul is embittered, your heart is pricked, and you are that man. <clears throat> you know, man without heart is dead. 
And then he behaved like what? British beef. Brut British beef, not British. British beef. No? And then, do you know what, the, what does the alligator does to you when you pull out your arm out? Tamilson singing guy was embittered and he had some difficulties. Maybe his, his health failed or his, one of his children lost faith. He was embittered against God. And then, and then he described his feelings like this. God was holding his hand. I beat him. I bow, you know, hum, like that. I was you know, brutish and immature. But nevertheless, <coughs> did God took his hand away? No. He never took his hand away. He hold his hand, like a father holding his uh, son, going down, sliding. He hold it, no matter how he was, he hold it, and then he saw that at the sanctuary of God. So I really want to uh, talk about talk about gospel. from the common illness. Since because we are Christian, we, 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 we don't get cancer. We don't die. We don't have any difficulties. Because we are living after Genesis chapter 3, the common problems come to us. It's not going to go away. And then how do you process that? It's hard. Because even the Aesop almost lost his faith. Because it's too hard. Until, until you go to the sanctuary and meet God personally. Until you look at Jesus on the cross, suffering for you, and until you, 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 you see it, and until you receive God's, God's counseling, we all, we, all want, we all want to lose it. Until we see God holding out his hand to you, even though you bite, but he will not let his hand go. Why are we are smiling? Because we chose to ignore God's hand. And we think that we can we can grab somebody. Oh she's cute, I can grab that kind of stuff. And then oh this career looks good and we can grab. Until until we, we have that, we don't get it. So I want to see the gospel, okay? Is that no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, 